Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's presentation. Um, as I see people still continuing to uh, log in, I figure I'll cover some of the housekeeping issues and then go ahead and start off our presentation. Um, thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments for our presenter today or for myself, uh, please feel free to direct them via the question and or chat window. We'll do our best to get to everyone's questions. Uh, either throughout the presentation or as time allows at the end of the session. I know we've got uh, a great presentation here for you, so uh, please feel free to let us know your questions and comments as, as we go through the presentation. Also, we will be recording this presentation, so if you wanted to have a copy of this recording for uh, review or maybe to share with a colleague who couldn't be here, um, Keep an eye in your inbox for this, and we will be sending out a link to the recording in about a day or so after the event. So uh, keep an eye out for that. So with that being said, um, welcome to our presentation. Today we're going to cover the top five problems identified with Stratosphere UX. Um, this is a session that we also hosted back in September, um, but we've kind of gone through and updated it to talk about some of the times and some of the specifics around uh, work from home. Our presenter today, Chris Walker, will be taking us through it. He's one of our uh, senior solutions consultants, and he is a great subject matter expert on the Stratosphere UX platform and has built this presentation around a lot of his interactions with his customers and the different organizations that he interacts with on a daily basis. He's uh, truly seen probably it all, and this is a great way for him to um, kind of capsize, uh, capsulize this information and deliver it all out to you to kind of share some of those experiences. Just a little bit before we get, uh, I hand it over to Chris Walker about our solution set. Uh, Liquidware has a, a great solution uh, set and we've got three different products. We've got Profile Unity, FlexApp, and Stratosphere. Each one of them um, work in a different area to pr uh, provide an adaptive workspace management set of solutions uh, to help any Windows desktop uh, or workspace out there, um, no matter what platform you're on, uh, to help deliver user environment management, application layering, and visibility. Today's presentation, I think, is going to focus a little bit more on the Stratosphere product, but if you're interested, uh, visit our website, um, liquidware.com, for more information about the Profile Unity and FlexApp solutions, and I think Chris might even touch on some of those solutions in his upcoming slides. So, Chris, do you want to go ahead and take us through today's presentation? Yeah. Thanks, Ray. So, I deal with um, customers running Stratosphere around the world, all kind of different industries, you know real estate, education, insurance, legal, um, education, from large banking facilities. And at the end of the day, we all have approximately the same problem. So different issues based on the time, you know, this being the, the, the um, cold and flu season, COVID-19, you know, the issues and priorities have changed since we did this last September. And I've even got some new technology to show you, to help you uh, uh, mitigate some of those issues and, and even solve that last mile particular problem. When we're talking to the individual customers, though, um, you know, the, the issues are the same, depending on the applications that they're running. You know, the applications, it's all Windows, it's Mac, things like that, virtual, physical cloud. So if you're in Amazon, Azure, Google, Citrix, VMware, um, it's, you know, the issues um, are, are really the same ac across a lot of our customers. So last September we did one, just wanted to kind of review what the priorities were uh, last September. It was a lot different world back then, even though it's you know, just six months ago. So you know, number one, back in September, user login times. I want to be able to log in people faster in the environment. Everybody's complaining. You know, I don't want a five-minute login time. Get me into my system, and it would actually help me lower my, uh, my overhead because it wasn't processing as much stuff. Hardware acceleration for my video cards memory usage and paging, last boot time, you know, when's the last time I booted that machine six months ago, don't do that, and then remote display, getting my users connected from their physical machine to virtual machine so they could do their job, a lot of them have a laptop, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. <clears throat> so these are the priorities back in September. Now, things have changed. We've just sent 5,000, 10,000 people home for my work and everybody's working from home. So what's different? Well, guess what, number five, is login. Remember in September, login was actually number one. 
So this is a very complex issue, dealing with domain controllers, broken GPOs, um, how long does it take a GPO to run? Stratosphere can actually break all of this down. So today, when we look at users, um, they're working from home, you know what, a 30 second or two minute login time isn't that big a deal. They're willing to put up with it. Um, whereas back in September, I need to log in in 10 seconds. Nowadays, people are working from home. It's like, you know, I can go get my coffee. I can do other stuff. So this login time, which was at number one, now has actually moved to number five. Still a big issue, but people are being more tolerant of this because of the work from home issues and things like that. Number two, or number four, machine last boot. Still amazes me because this happens all the time how long, you know, you call me up, your machine is running slow. When's the last time you actually rebooted that machine? This has, you know, issues with memory fragmentation, application memory leaks, GDI, that's graphic device object leaks. My rule of thumb, basically, over 30 days, you don't have security updates. No patches on the OS. So we've got to get that system updated to, um, or rebooted for security purposes as well. Otherwise, you've got poor performance, people calling the help desk. You just got all kinds of problems. How do we keep in touch with that? So customers are actually deploying agents to those remote machines in the field. You know, my laptop sitting here at my house has an agent reporting to our Stratosphere system, and the company can monitor me. If I call the help desk, they know exactly what's going on in my environment. They say, hey, Chris, you haven't rebooted that thing in, you know, 60 days. Don't call me back until you reboot that box. Because it's, you know, don't just shut the lid on it every night. You actually have to do a reboot. This is still a very big problem in the, in the industry. Then I did create an actual 4A because of, you know, not rebooting causes memory usage and paging. So this is a big issue. I can actually reduce the amount of I.O. on my system if I keep the machine from paging. After a Windows machine has been running for two weeks or, or six weeks, you'll see that the page file is getting used a lot. That's eating up your hard drive I.O. and causing a lot of CPU. Take CPU to move that information out of RAM onto disk, and then it's using my page file. So I've got heat hitting my CPU and my disk subsystem simultaneously. So by freeing up memory, either rebooting the machine or adding more memory to the machine, um, my user is going to be much happier, and the resources of the machine are going to be much happier as well. The applications at the end of the day are what it's all about. All right, top five, uh, top problem in, uh, number three. User computer at home office, the last mile in productivity. So we have a lot of people at home, and wouldn't it be really nice if I could actually monitor? So this user sitting on his laptop, he's talking to an access point in his house. So wouldn't it be really nice if I could tell how many bars they have? In Stratosphere 615, which is coming out and very soon, um, we're going to be releasing uh, this new feature. So the agent on my laptop can actually detect my signal strength of my laptop to my access point. Even give me some hints, you know, what is the DB? Hey, it looks like you're pretty close to your access point. You got a certain amount of latency. Um, what hop are you hitting to? Who's your provider? So using my trace route capability, I can actually tell you the provider uh, that they're talking to. This is in my house. So we're talking about the last mile Users are calling up, the system's running slow, well, it's not my system, you know, uh, the, my Citrix system's running fine, my Amazon system's running fine. What's going on in your house? This is actually going to give me visibility into the user's system, how far they are away from their access point, and even their provider that they're talking to, and their latency back to their provider. You notice I got 127 milliseconds. I'm out in the country. I live in the country. Now, the second part of that, productivity. So managers are asking, hey, how productive are these people using? You know, maybe around certain applications, my user connectivity count. Um, not only connectivity, but also are they doing work? Is the mouse moving? Are they typing on the screen? How productive are those users? This is a little big brotherish, but just in the past couple months, the managers have started asking these questions. I just sent 10,000 people home from my office. Are they working? Are they getting their job done? You know, I know, I know they're all good people, but I kind of need to manage that productivity. Stratosphere has um, user information 
around their productivity. We've actually built some, uh, some work from home dashboards that we posted on our community site that can actually be imported directly into your Stratosphere 614 system. Those dashboards are getting updated as well uh, for 615 for even more information. So I'll be able to display you know, the Wi-Fi latency uh, for my users and what they look like at their house. So keep an eye out for this, this last mile information. Probably gonna be doing a lot more information around this for our users because our customers are asking for this level of detail. Number two, remote display protocol. So I'm sitting at my house. I need to get access to the computer back of the office or maybe in the cloud, you know, Amazon, Azure, Google, uh, wherever it is, service, your service provider. So I need that remote display protocol. That's your PC over IP for VMware, Blast for VMware, RDP, RFX, ICA for Citrix. So I need to monitor and understand the packet loss, the communication, the latency, retransmissions of that protocol from my user back into my, my cloud or wherever that user is trying to control that system in my corporate assets. Stratosphere can do this very easily. You monitor the protocol, even the remote machine without an agent. I don't need an agent on Mr. Torian's machine at his house. The remote display protocol gives me the remote machine and IP address automatically. It's actually built into all of these protocols. Uh, what machine is he actually controlling? How long was he on the system? His session idle time, was he actually doing any work? So we use that as well in the, the productivity component. The amount of I.O. So how much audio did he do? I ran this over a long period of time, so that's eight gig of, of audio traffic. So that was you know, over a month or something like that. Lots of audio, is he listening to the radio or on an IP, um, voice over IP call? Session latency, packet loss. Is this normal for his location? So I live in the country, my packet loss and my latency is pretty high, but you know, is it normal for me or am I having other issues that may be back in the data center or coming from my provider? So this is all around the protocol. We've been doing this for years. Now with the previous slide, I'd like to be able to tell more information about the user sitting at their desk if I have an agent on that particular machine. And was he working? So Michael Torian, yes, I know you're working. You probably just went away, you've worked on another machine, but this was, you know, allow me to track that, that working information. Problem number one. So this has changed a lot since last year. Number one, voice over IP. I've sent 300, 3,000, 30,000 people home. They're all working from their house. They need to communicate over voice over IP from their computer in their house to another user in his house. And what is that session latency? So I had a recent chance uh, to talk to a Jabber engineer from one of my customers, and he also knew Teams as well. And we were talking about you know session latency, because I really honestly thought it was all about just the latency. And he corrected me. He said, no, it's not. It's actually about the jitter. Jitter is the amount of transition up and down. So this user had 46 milliseconds of latency on Teams, but the jitter, it would go up and down 20 milliseconds. So that's his average. So it would go up to 80 and maybe down to 30. That jitter is what actually kills a voice over IP call. So the, the engineer I was talking to was a you know, Jabber and Teams engineer. And he said, you know, they can handle up to 100 milliseconds. Not a problem. But you get more than five milliseconds of jitter on that line, and then you're going to start having problems. That's when you get the hacking or, you know, the voice loss and the echoes on the line, things like that. So Stratosphere allows me to track that jitter down to the individual process. I can even with Stratosphere turn on my port level tracking and tell you what Teams is actually talking to and add in the IP address here so that I can actually see where is Teams talking. So yeah, today in the environment, number one voice over IP is probably the biggest issue. People are very, um, relaxed and forgiving about login. They're relaxed and forgiving about my remote display protocol. But when they're on the phone and they can't hear or understand the other person, it's extremely frustrating. So that's why this is you know, boiled to the top as the number one issue that I'm helping people to track down. So I'll track this down using my process analyzer to basically track the remote IP addresses that Teams or, or Jabber is talking to. 
Then I'll use my trace route to find out where in the infrastructure my actual problem is. Where is my networking issue inside of inside of the system? So very handy for tracking down those those latency problems. You know, it could be in my house. My trace route would actually trace it route all the way back to that user. So just to review, September 2019, user login time was number one. Now it's number five. So hardware acceleration, memory usage, last boot time, remote display. You could you know you can move these around as, in a couple different orders. Today, May 20th, voice over IP, latency and jitter, remote display. That last mile connection information that's coming out in uh, in our 615 release of Stratosphere will help me diagnose what's going on at the user side in their system. Last boot, it's probably never going to go away. People just refuse to boot, reboot their workstations. I log in, I connect to a, a remote virtual machine, and then when I'm done, I disconnect. I don't shut it down, I don't reboot it, I just disconnect. Tomorrow I come back in and reconnect, and it's been sitting there running for six months. Number five, login times. You know, this does save a lot of time, lower my infrastructure cost, um, but at the end of the day, people are being very forgiving uh, in the current market about login times. So this helps me improve the user experience. All of these things today, you know, we can track all this information and more with Stratosphere. The use cases for Stratosphere are almost endless. I've used it for e-discovery. I've used it for um, asset recovery. So I've got my applications. I've deployed 10,000 copies of Visio out there and only two people have used it. You know, I've got a customer who's already pulled back a quarter million dollars in licenses just by using the Stratosphere data. So there are a lot of different use cases for Stratosphere. So if you have any questions on the community site, uh, we do post a lot of this stuff. You know, when people ask, where do I get my numbers from? We manage and I manage and um, maintain what I call the spot check methodology or what's a cheat sheet. And this allows me to basically to publish what the key numbers are inside of Stratosphere. So check out our community site. Uh, you post some questions up there if you've got any issues. We've got engineers around the world that'll that can help you out with different things. Ray, any uh, any questions? Yeah, we sure do, Chris. So someone had asked, um, and let me go through a few of these, but someone asked, does an agent need to be installed on the personal device from home, uh, especially in reference to, to number three, which I think was the Wi-Fi bit? Yep, so in number three, last mile in productivity. In order for me to get that information about how many bars they have, I do have to have an agent on that machine. This brings up a confidentiality problem. Is it a bring your, bring your own from home? So it's my laptop, my personal laptop. Company has no right to put an agent on my laptop. But if it's the company laptop, they have full right to put that on there. I've, I've neglected to mention too, our agent will also run an IGEL uh, Stratadesk, Tenzig, uh, Mac, and Linux machines. So, but yes, in order for me to get this data, I have to have an agent in the field because I'm actually doing a trace route from this machine back to the cloud, and then my agent locally is telling me the Wi-Fi power. So, there has to be an agent to get this type data in the field. And Chris, I th another question here, I think kind of applies to maybe it across the board. For all of these things to get the information uh, is requiring the agent, correct? Um, no, we actually can get, uh, let's see, the remote display data. So like here, I could have an agent on my virtual machine in the office. That agent, because of the protocol, BLAST, ICA, RDP, is going to it knows the remote IP address and machine name, so I don't have to have an agent to get the remote IP address and machine name. But I wouldn't know anything else about that machine without an agent on it. CPU, memory, disk, network. Without an agent, I'm not going to know anything about that device besides its name and its IP address. Okay. Someone asked, is there an update with iGel on the iGel agent? The IGL management console as of December has our agent built into it. Now you can actually write through the Stratosphere interface, you can download the agent and manually deploy it. But in IGL, Tenzig, and a lot of them, our agent is actually built into their management interface. So you can go to the IGL management interface, I think it's on the bottom left-hand corner, 
uh, search for liquidware, and you can actually deploy our agent directly from their, their interface to your machines. Okay. Someone else asked, on what platforms does this work? We have Windows, Linux, and Thin OS. Hold on, there's a little bit more. And what about Mac OS and mobile devices such as iOS or Android? Yep. So we have agents for Windows, Linux, Mac, iGel, Stratadesk, Tenzig, probably a couple more. Um, the Teradici devices, no, because they're you know it's a hardened OS, you know, it just runs the Teradici OS. <clears throat> but we do have agents for most of the major ones, Mac. Um, we don't have any iOS or Android agents at this time. Okay. Um, someone asked, do you have uh, any optimization features um, to act on the collected metrics in Stratosphere? Yeah. Let me bring up another slide here. So in Stratosphere, built in, it's a you know part of Stratosphere. By the way, all this is a single SKU. Everything I'm showing here is a single SKU license per user. <clears throat> so in Stratosphere, we have an optimization capability that can actually take action based on CPU and memory um, inside this machine. So imagine I'm running Google Chrome. I've got it, you know, streaming a video, watching a movie, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and then I need to flip over to Visio. Well, Chrome is sitting in the background crushing my box, but what we do is we change the base priority to low and then change Visio to above normal. So not, um, basically this, what this allows me to do is the in-focused foreground application would look like it has access to all the CPUs at one time. We do this at a core level. So, you know, one, one CPU, eight cores, or whatever you got in your machine, um, we'd monitor this per core and take actions based on the cores and the number of threads. So Chrome would not be hurting my Visio. Same thing with like Windows updates. So if Windows updates coming down, I don't want it to hurt the user. We'll actually push that down and change the base priority. We will not affect virus protections or anything that, um, you know, basically it will ask it, hey, can I change your base priority? Virus protection softwares and certain other, other tools will say no, we don't ask again. So we, we don't force it down, we ask it down. Comes in very handy in extending the life of equipment. I've got some banks, uh, financial institutions where teller machines may be you know, three, four, five years old. This can make those machines last another six to 18 months just by turning on the optimization. Very cool. All right, here's another question. Is there an agent for Dell Wise clients as well, or is it planned? We do have, I'm not sure if it's still around, but we did have a Wise agent at one time for some of the, some of the Wise devices. Uh, you'd have to check our website uh, for specific versions. You know, if they're running embedded Windows, not a, not a big deal. But depending on the Wise OS that they may be running, we do have cert we do support certain models. Okay. Um, here's another one. Can a report be generated to show the VoIP latency that includes users? Yes. Well, not necessarily a report inside the system, but we do have the ability to export a lot of that stuff and uh, give you visibility into that data. So like I can export, you know, anything in Stratosphere, I can drop this into an Excel spreadsheet. As far as a report, there's over 300 reports in Stratosphere. I'm not sure, well, actually this comes out in 615. So I will ask the developers if there's a report specifically around this in 615. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, here's another question that I think kind of relates to that. Do you have any integrations with uh, business intelligence tools like Power BI? Yep, actually on the community site, uh, one of our engineers out of Europe actually wrote up the instructions of how to connect Power BI to Stratosphere using our API. Uh, it's a big thing for a lot of our larger customers. You know, our interface is pretty good. It's got a lot of data in it, but I want my manager to have a pie chart speaking Japanese. It needs to go right to left instead of left to right. Um, so Power BI, Tableau give us the ability to pretty much suck out any of our data we want to. They can perform actions on it, upload it to SharePoint, publish it for other users to see. So um, I'm actually working with one of our engineers from Alliances where we're going to build a Power BI interface around this last mile. And then one of my developers 
going to work together to actually do the same thing. So it's actually a dashboard in Stratosphere. Excellent. Um, someone asks, I need clarification. Can you throttle a process, for example, McAfee to uh, 15%? No, we are not doing throttling. <clears throat> all, our, all our optimization does is change the base priority. Uh, but and there are tools out there that can do throttling. Never throttle your virus protection because here's what happens. I go to write something to the file system. McGaffey or the virus protection software has to parse that before it will actually write it to disk and give you an acknowledgement. If you throttle the virus protection software, you're basically slowing me down from writing. Never throttle the virus protection software. But we don't do throttling. We actually just change the base priority. It's very simple, like in Task Manager, right-click, change priority. So we're following you know, Microsoft best practices and not being very heavy-handed on it. I can kill processes. I can raise them or lower them. Um, even I can put them in a list as well, so they're always raised or always lowered. But we would never, um, our product does not do no harm. It would never touch the virus protection software. Okay. Someone else asks, how much overhead does an agent have on systems? Yeah, good question. Let me actually flip over to my Stratosphere system. So this is the application tab inside of Stratosphere. Now we're running, uh, that's my agent right there. It's called the connector ID, or we call it the CID. But that's our agent right there. Uh, it's running on 91 machines right now in my environment. It's using about 24 megahertz of computing power. Uh, it is consuming 121 megabytes of RAM. Now, we have it in debug mode. So he's actually showing up in, as workload number eight in my environment. Most of the time, he doesn't actually show up in the top 10. So our Stratosphere agent, you know, for our developers, we've got it in debug mode, cranking out, turning on every option we can do, and it's still only using 24 megahertz of computing power. We don't hide our agent like some of our competitors do. Not going to name any names. All right, someone asked, can you provide the link to the community site? And I'll throw that up in the chat window uh, for everyone out there. Someone also asked, is it possible to send alerts? Um, if so, uh, mail or SCOM? Yep, so Stratosphere, you know, it's a full diagnostic system. So yes, we have uh, SNMP and SNTP type of alarms and emails that can come out of the system, as well as our reports. So I can do an email. The email would basically say, hey, this ESX host is over CPU utilization. This user is out of disk space. There's about 50 different uh, types of alarms for email or SNMP. And then you can also configure our reports as well to run. And there's a little checkbox. If empty, don't email. So you can actually configure some of our reports as an alarm too. So you know, a report for um, uh, machines with low disk space. You know, put a, a storage uh, a threshold in there of 20%. And if the report's empty, it actually doesn't do anything. It doesn't email you anything. It only email you a list of machines that the storage was under 20%. So yes, there's full alarms and alerts in the system as well. Now, side note on that one too, um, a lot of our customers are running ServiceNow, Service Desk uh, from uh, I think CA. Um, remedy heat ticketing system, so they're using our API to pull the data out of Stratosphere, then they'll actually write their own alarms. Uh, one customer, you know, there's a particular process that was being done by the security team, and the security team swore up and down, we're not doing that in the middle of the day. So they started using Stratosphere to pull it out into ServiceNow, and if they saw that process go over 10%, it generated a ticket and sent it to the service, sent it to the uh, security team. So basically, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> when the security team kept getting these alarms generated in service now, you know, they kind of couldn't hide from it. So it's, it is a common practice to take our data, pull it into another system that can do a lot of business intelligence, and then generate an alarm or a ticket. Excellent. Uh, someone else asked, do you have any info specific to WVD and Stratosphere? Yep, so we released uh, 614, can now run in the Azure cloud uh, on WVD. 
the uh, latest protocols that they're running actually don't work in 614. That will be resolved in 615. So like my remote display protocols, I uh, can't pick that up unless you're running the latest 615 software. <clears throat> but yes, we can see the, um, you know, the machine, the applications, what they're doing. I can do trace route. It's just in 614. By the way, it can be deployed directly from their catalog. So Stratosphere is in their catalog. You just say, you know, deploy, power up. It gives an IP address, the whole nine yards. You slap a license on it and then um, put the agents onto your WVD machines and you're good to go. Excellent. Someone else asked, um, and this was a bit earlier, and I'm pretty sure you, you mentioned it, but maybe we can go back to it, is do you have any specific dashboards to assist in our increased work from home monitoring? Oh, yeah. Yep. So on the community site, you'll actually find this one. This is one of my spot check documents. So it's a spot check for physical desktop. So I took my best practices around spot, you know, spot checks and physical machines, and I built a dashboard. This is actually on the community site. So if you have Stratosphere 614, you can go to community site under Stratosphere dashboards. You can actually import this right into your Stratosphere system. So like uh, last boot time, you know, if it's over 30 days, you got a problem, 15 to 30, and eh, they're kind of okay. Under 15, good, good, good user. Login delay, CPU, memory, disk, network. So, you know, we've built a couple dashboards, even some of these work from home. Let me bring up one of these real quick. Uh, from home productivity. This one's pretty busy, but it has a lot of great data on here. So it'll take a second for this to populate, again, because of my latency in my environment. But, you know, number of users, what domain control are they hitting, teams productivity, and these are some new widgets in 615. So the productivity of teams, what are the users running? Uh, this, I think somebody's still working on this uh, particular dashboard here, uh, or from home dashboard. Here's one I built. This is a real simple one. We're going to be putting more of these onto our community site uh, because these are all kind of built for 615. So work from home user count for the past seven days, connected user, computer idle time. So, you know, we are tracking idle time. So yeah, we're, we're building out more of these dashboards <clears throat> to post them onto our community site so that you can basically import them directly into your Stratosphere system. Excellent. Um, someone asked, any plans for integration between UX and SCVMM? SCCM? It says SCVMM. Okay, yeah, I think they're talking about SCCM. Um, so SCCM is you know basically the Microsoft Mar um, uh, software distribution application, uh, district applications, registry settings, in machine inventory, things like that. We don't have any current plans for integration, but I do have customers that have used our API and our, you know, like turn off the inventory module in SCCM because I have all the inventory and the applications installed versus used. So I actually have a lot more data with a smaller footprint. So we don't have any current integration plans from a development cycle, but I do know of customers that have used our API to pull data into SCCM. Yeah, it looks like uh, some clarification came in talking about uh, Microsoft Virtual Machine Manager. I do not know. That's, I do not know the answer to that. I'll have to get back to that. Okay, you can always follow up on that. Um, let's see here. We've got another question here. For health care organizations, we use monitoring tools from Epic to monitor login times, session times, et cetera, in order to stay within required Epic thresholds. Does Stratosphere have any integrations or Epic-centric dashboards? It does not, but I have built for my customers running Epic. By the way, I've actually layered Epic with our Profile Unity technology. I've actually layered Epic at boot time uh, for some customers into a Zen app environment. <clears throat> so pretty cool, 300,000 registry settings, the whole nine yards. And in that particular customer, I've actually built a dashboard for Epic. So I can see the um, SQL servers, the, the processor, the, the um, front-end processors, all those different machines, the communication traffic. So we actually built a custom dashboard on his system just for Epic. 
Now the Epic installs for every customer is different and very unique. So I will probably never build a dashboard and put it on the community site that's for Epic because your environment, your naming convention, the way you've deployed it is very unique to the hospital. All right. Uh, another question came in asking if the session was uh, going to be available after today. Uh, yes, we are recording the session and we'll send out a link to the recording um, via email. So keep an eye on your inbox. It normally takes us uh, 12 to 24 hours to get it posted up to our webinar archive and get that link available for you and uh, get it out there. So uh, watch for that in the next day or so. Any other questions out there from the field? I'm seeing some comments, thanks. Uh, this has been very informative, um, but we, we have some time and we can cover some more questions if there's anything out there. Yep. Check out the community side. There's a lot of good data out there. I like people have heard me talk about hardware acceleration. If you don't have the NVIDIA cards, one of our engineers, Adam Rue out of Texas, he actually went and found all of the GPOs and the ADM templates and put it into a PDF document to turn off hardware acceleration. It'll save you about 10% on your ESX servers, um, but there's a lot of great information that our engineers and some of our customers have even posted on our community site. Yeah, it's also a great place to interact um, with, with anybody out there. So if you have any other questions that come up, uh, maybe when you're reviewing this or whatnot, you can feel free to, to interact with different customers and our experts on that community site. You can also reach out to us at sales.liquidware.com. Um, it's just a general inbox that goes out to our whole team, uh, which is a great place to do. I see another question coming in here that says, is the upgrade path from an older version to the new still a straightforward process? Yeah, that's the great thing about Stratosphere. It's a virtual appliance. So there should be an upgrade tab under the administration section. If it has access to the internet, you just press the button and go get lunch. It'll automatically download it, patch it, and reboot itself. If it doesn't have internet access, then you do an offline upgrade so you go to our website, get the link, download a 1.2 gig update image, upload it into Stratosphere, tell it to install, and again, go to lunch, come back, and you have the new version. So anything above 6.1.0 or uh, 6.0.2, you should be able to do that process pretty simply. Someone asked, what about the clients? Do they auto-update? You can. It depends on your environment. So imagine you've got the agent built into your base image for Citrix or Horizon. Um, every time that machine boots up, it would have to do an upgrade. So in, in Stratosphere, you can turn on the auto upgrade feature. I generally only recommend that for physical machines or persistent desktops because I don't want the non-persistent machines, every time they boot up, upgrade, the boot up, upgrade, boot up, upgrade, you just end up a lot of I.O. So you can control that by groups in Stratosphere. So like I pick the physical desktops and turn on auto upgrade. My virtual desktops, I may have it turned off. But yes, we can do an auto upgrade of the, of the agents on the fly, even the Mac agents. Excellent. Well, I'm gl glad you put this slide up here, Chris, because um, beyond the community and the website that I think we've talked about already, um, another area that this relates to this webinar is looking at some of our other uh, customer success stories. And so those go into some of your customers that you've uh, pulled from some of your discussions here and other ones out there. So if you're interested in hearing some more uh, different experiences with our products in the field and uh, some of the issues that they were having and how they solved them, um, that's a great resource for you out there as well. Um, here's another question that came in. Where's the compatibility lists of the agents? Compatibility list. If it's Windows, it's compatible. Um, so we basically support, I think, our, well, our agent won't actually, we drop support for Windows XP, but anything above Windows XP, up to latest versions of Windows 10, uh, but in our installation and configuration guide would be the list of like Mac OS's or uh, versions of Windows. So yeah, the compatibility of Windows, Linux, and Mac is actually in the installation and configuration guide. Minimum requirements, all of that stuff. Okay. 
Well, it's looking like we're getting towards the end of our list of questions here. Um, did you have anything to add in at the end before we wrap up, Chris? All right, not seeing any more questions, and uh, I think we've covered everything. Please feel free to reach out uh, at the community site uh, that we mentioned. We put the link in the chat window. Uh, also, you can reach out to us at sales at liquidware.com. Chris, thank you for bringing us through today's presentation. Thank you all for attending and uh, for your interest in this topic. Uh, again, we will be sending out a link with the recording uh, for your review or to share with a colleague. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good Take day. Care.